And keeping our children safe is the focus of new calls for wide-reaching child protection laws following the death of three-year-old Nia Glassy. Nia's death in 2007, after weeks of horrific physical abuse, caused a national outcry. Her mother, Lisa Kuka, was found guilty of manslaughter, and her partner, Wedemu Curtis, and his brother, Michael, were found guilty of murder. Now, coroner Wallace Bain is calling for a range of measures, including compulsory monitoring of children from newborn to five years. So, will that work? Joining me is Christchurch Abuse Council Councillor Daryl Gregory, and from Rotorua, Piripi Curtis, who's speaking out over his whanau's involvement in Nia's death. Now, a warning. What we have to talk about here may offend some, and it's certainly not for children's ears. Let's start with you, Daryl. Why is this subject so hard to talk about? It's such an ugly topic, and people see sexual abuse is something that doesn't happen to them. It happens out there to nasty people. And um, who wants to talk about what happens to a five, six-year-old boy or girl uh, with an adult um, who rapes them or sodomises them or sticks his penis in, his in their mouth? You know, That's not the sort of subject that people really want to talk about. So it just gets left. Also, people don't believe it happens to boys, like Ken said in his story. And where does a five-year-old, seven-year-old, 13-year-old boy go to? Who does he talk to when that's happening to him? So it just gets left, so we don't talk about it. How do you actually start to get Māori to talk about sexual abuse? I guess uh, those things that we hold uh, dear in our own culture, uh, those concepts of whānau and uh, whanaungatanga and aroha, all those things uh, need to be not only talked about but demonstrated. And so when we promote those things and build those things and live those things, there's no room for this other stuff. But I, I kind of think that uh, we've kind of moved away from uh, having children at the centre of who we are. We talk about them. But I sort of question the fact, do we really love our children? Do we really love our children? If we did, they would be at the centre of everything we do. So anything we try to do, we'd have to say, what's the consequences of this for our children? And why are we allowing our children to grow up in isolation from those support groups that we have? You know, who are the kaitiaki of our whanau uh, today? Pitipi, how has the Curtis whanau reacted to the coroner's report? I guess uh, we, we um, see that as, as positive. Uh, what he's suggesting is putting the, the child first, and that's important. Um, for most, most of our family, um, we see that as a, as a really good move. Your father came out and criticised a number of other people in your family over what happened to Nia. You're talking about this now. Why is that? Uh, because <clears throat> from that time, we've, um, we've done things. You know, as a as a whanau, uh, and specifically because of what happened, and you know, gave us a lot of drive to uh, establish the kura that we um, currently have, um, and that kura is really for us the way to answer, um, I guess, the situation that came about that some of our family um, could commit such horrendous crimes against um, you know children. And, and our response really was to take ownership. And um, we now have a kura that we can see as a way to engage the family. And, and some of this coroner's report talks about, um, I guess, communicating with, with uh, families, you know, making sure that the kids aren't left, left alone to be abused like they have been. And certainly having our kura, uh, we're uh, talking to each other a lot more. And this way we uh, hope that, uh, our, our, we'll, we'll talk and we'll see what's going on within our, within our whānau because we're, we're seeing each other from day to day. And that's kind of part of the reason uh, we, we didn't know about uh, Nia's clay, case within our own whānau. We, we didn't really know, for me, didn't really know those, those boys, Widemu and Michael. They were strangers almost. Daryl, is this what we need to be doing? Does, does whānau need to be involved? <laughs> 
Whānau, I guess, um, how do we define that and, and who, who makes up that whānau? Normally we're talking about people who are quite isolated and separated from the sort of whānau structures and they create their own sort of groups. If we look at some of these incidents of these child death, it's normally the mother is isolated from a whole lot of her extended whānau and she's involved in another group of people, and normally with a, a, a boyfriend or someone who comes in and they're the ones that kind of do a lot of the damage. But when we talk about we have to talk, we do have to talk, but I think we got to a stage now where we also have to talk with experts in the field because we talk about one, there's the abusers and there's the abused. And there are quite different ways of working with both. And talking's good, but we've got to be prepared to, if we, if we open that door, we have to prepare to go all the way in. And like someone said, you know, when we start hearing the screams and cries of our children, we can't back off. We've got to keep going. And uh, it takes a lot of courage for people to do that. You had an interesting response when I asked you in the green room, why are Māori continuing to kill their kids? I think uh, I get a little bit frustrated when we throw the word Māori in there because everybody kills children. All, all cultures kill their children. And one of the problems when we, when we add the ethnicity to this debate I think mainstream New Zealand then forget about the bait because it's not us, it's those Māoris who, why do Māoris kill their children? Why do Māoris sexually abuse their children? And then we look for all these simplistic answers. The issue is sexual abuse of our children, you know. Why are these children being exposed to such horrific things? And to be honest, we have to talk about the real things, you know. Uh, why, do children, why do children know what, what semen tastes like in their mouth? We don't want to talk about that. We want to talk about Māori uh, problems, if you like. It's a lot easier to put it as a racist issue rather than an issue of rape. And unfortunately, that's the end of our conversation today. It's been very hard to talk about, and I really appreciate you coming in to talk to us about this, and especially you, Pitipi, and to the Curtis Fano for bringing this up with us. Kia ora and kia kaha. Kia ora, Thank Jay. you. Ai marika, kia ora koutou katoa.